It's time once again to step out, step up, and step into the Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clemens. Rick's expertise in the coming out process has helped hundreds of men and women step out of the closet to live authentically as gays and lesbians. Freeing you from the feelings of guilt and shame, Rick's heart-centered approach is loaded with bankable advice and take action tips for living powerfully on the other side of the closet door. Each week, the Coming Out Lounge brings you heartwarming coming out stories, thought-provoking insights, and diverse perspectives for living out and proud. Pull up a chair and spend an inspiring hour in the Coming Out Lounge. Stepping out, stepping up, and stepping into living your truth. Here's the host of your show, Coming Out Coach, Rick Clemens. And good morning, everybody. And it's love, love, love is in the air today. Whether we're looking at Anderson Cooper, who just recently came out and potentially might be having some problems with his man, Ben Masani, or... Can you actually believe it? Jennifer Aniston has finally found her happy ending with Justin Theroux. Or we're also kind of hearing rumors here that Taylor Swift is getting pretty serious about Connor Kennedy. And, of course, who can forget the latest headlines that the lovers of Twilight, yes, Robert Pattinson and Kirsten Stewart, having a little fun in happy little love land because Kirsten decided to cheat. All of this is so interesting, and it's all about love in a modern day. Even Kanye West and Kim Kardashian are trying to figure out how does Cupid's arrow really, truly strike home? Well, as a gay man and being in the gay community, I will say this has been one of the biggest challenges, hurdles, and heartbreaks I've had to get through on my journey towards finding true love. And today I've got a really special guest who's going to help us get through this Give us some advice. He's a guy that I've become pretty good friends with. He's got his own radio show. And on top of that, he's pretty much cute as a button. So we're going to just jump right in. I'm so excited to have my friend and radio show host, David Cruz the Third, with me. And he is from Finding Cupid. And I hope we found you. How are you doing, David? Good morning, Rick. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a very sweet introduction. <laughs> uh, well, you're a sweet guy, and we had a lot of fun when I had the opportunity to come on your radio show and really share my life, and I couldn't wait. Of course, at that point in time, I didn't even know I was going to have a radio show. It was so far removed from our conversations, and then literally, I think you were my good luck charm because literally in that week is when uh-huh. the possibility came up for having a show. And I ended up listening back to the show I did with you and kind of sitting there going, yeah, maybe I should think about this. So anyway, I do consider you one of my good luck charms along the way. And I'm so excited to have you here. And I know you had a busy night last night because you had your own show and then you did another show and now you're doing this. So you are just in radio land big time right now. (laughs) Am yes. Um, it, yeah, it's definitely in the air in the last 24 hours, it seems, or the last week or, you know, last two weeks with everybody else in, uh, in Hollywood as well. Too. But and that's a great thing. It's a good sign here that all of that is happening and the it's for aligning for people. <laughs> so right, right. I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's so cool because, you know, uh, and we're going to get to your story and how, you know, finding Cupid came to be and everything. But I love this because whether you're gay, straight, bisexual, transgender, whatever the story is, I think if we all look deep inside ourselves, this is one of those human things that we all want. We just really, truly want to be loved. And I know you well enough, and I've read some of your articles, been on your show. You're just a hopeless romantic girlfriend, so <laughs> I swear. I can. David can drop a tear at the side of a bride magazine. So, I mean, <laughs> that is one of very those kind true. Of so, so why don't we go ahead and let's just kind of, you know, let's get the, you know, the real story out of the way first, and then we'll get into the, some advice. Sure. So how did Finding Cupid come about? Well, you know, um, I've always been a writer. And uh, that was my original passion in life that somewhere along the way, like many in, in life as we're growing, uh, you know, I, I abandoned it. And it came about about three years ago after a broken heart. I had broken up with a, a guy that I was dating. I decided that I needed to leave the city I was in and really literally start from scratch, start over. And I moved to L.A. 
um, you know, within three months of that, I was out with some friends celebrating a birthday party, and um, I was scouted at a bar randomly um, to be part of a reality show. Um, at that point, you know, I had no interest in being in any part of anything, and I'm not an actor, I'm not, you know, any part of the world at all, and um I kind of did it as I was encouraged by a fellow actor friend of mine to just kind of go along with the process. Long story short, I ended up being cast in uh, Bravo's Millionaire Matchmaker, and um, I was on a very uh, interesting, to say the least, episode that it sounded like really, you know, resonated with a lot of people after it aired. And I found myself interacting with people who had watched this very, you know, interesting episode. It was a cool, actually. Um, and people stopped me everywhere that I went and were asking me, you know, how I was. And they couldn't believe this crazy day I was on. And they really loved how nice and sweet that I was on TV. And I really am that in real life. And at the core of me has always been that hopeless romantic. And so... You know, people always talk about how Oprah talks about her whispers and to listen to those you know, little words in the back of your head. And it was at that moment when people kept coming up to me and cur- encouraging me to be who I was and encouraging me to, you know, to stand up for, you know, the romantics that are out there because they were similar to me um, and related to me that I really kind of said, I'm going to continue or try to continue to inspire people, you know, by writing again. Um, the door that had opened right after that was I was introduced to somebody at Frontiers uh, Magazine, which is a gay magazine here in Los Angeles, right. and I was approached to write a blog on relationships and love, and that was the moment where Finding Cupid was born, and uh, it was a, a it was a blog that I really just said I'm going to write about my experiences, my beliefs, and my journey through finding love, not only in LA but just in general. And, you know, I am a hopeless romantic, and I certainly do cry at Hallmark commercials and all those silly little things in between. But um, I always think of being a romantic as kind of a lost art uh, and that people don't really pay attention to it anymore. So I felt it was my duty to use Find and Keep It as a platform to remind people how to love again, uh, to inspire people to keep going, and to you know, to, to really be a role model of somebody that says, hey, being a romantic is cool. Uh, being a, you know, person that believes in uh, love is a, is a craft and an art is cool, and, and it's okay to be that way. So, it, you know, it took off, and I was happy to see that, and more people wanted to, you know, have more Finding Cupid. And so it evolved from a blog to a website, and it's now our radio show. So... It's been a, a, a beautiful journey for me. <laughs> That's fantastic. And I, I love this, you know, this, it's almost like your own, your own little Oprah come to life, but I love the little whispers. And yeah, it's so ironic because, and I, I, you and I haven't really had a chance to share this story um, of what ha- literally happened right after I did your show. And it was literally that same day. I get in the car and Another coach friend of mine and I had been talking about doing a radio show. She owned the show, and she's like, we should do something together. So we'd been talking about that, but we were kind of struggling with getting it all set. And what it was our, you know, what was our niche going to be? What was our angle going to be? You know, all this sort of stuff. And literally, I get in the car, and another good friend of mine called me to catch up, and I was talking to her about this, and she said well, why don't you just do your own show? Why don't you just do like, you know, you created this brand called the Coming Out Lounge, you know, a year ago. She goes, why don't you create, you know, use the Coming Out Lounge and and do that show? And literally, I was driving back from your studio. (laughs) This conversation takes place. I hang up the phone and I feel my phone vibrate. And yes, you're not supposed to text and drive and everything, but hello, we're in LA traffic. So we're not even driving. We're just sitting. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to this email. And it's my girlfriend who had the radio show and she is texting me going, I want to talk to you about something. I'm like, okay, can we talk tomorrow? Literally the next morning she said, you know, I'm just wondering if you'd be interested in taking over the show and just doing it yourself. It was the little whisper that I had that 
really launched this whole thing. And I think this is so important. I love how you brought it up. When Mm -hmm. we don't listen to our little whispers, whether it's careers, finance, and especially in love, that's when we get ourselves thrown off track. And I think it's so important to really listen to that. So we've got a couple of minutes to go till we get to break, but I really want to talk about those little whispers a whole lot. Cause I think that's kind of the basis. And of course I want to talk about you being the lovely, hopeless romantic that you are. And how you, <laughs> in of course. You know, what is one little whisper you could say that you hear when you know you're in the right relationship? Well, you know, people call it whisper. Some people call it instinct. Um, I think that there, you know, there's something completely divine inside each of each and every one of us that, uh, you know, as we go through trials and errors that we become more aware of. And, you know, those instincts about, you know, is this a right relationship? Is this uh, a right person for me? Um, you know, those things will continue to pick up, pick at you. And, you know, you have to listen to those. Um, you know, it's a fine line between, you know, understanding is this paranoia? Is this, you know, my insecurities? Um, and, and, you know, you have to deal with those demons too, you know, prior or separately. But I really think that it's important for all of us to, you know, simply sit there and say, you know, I'm going to do the diligence and the work to, to find a relationship and right. uh, to meet someone and go through the dating process. But you really just have to listen. And you, yeah. you are the best judge of you and you know yourself best. So you should go with those no matter what. Yeah, and I think that's a great place for us to get ready to go to break is you know yourself the best. You're the best judge of you. And I want to pick up right there when we come back right after the break about how you dial into you so that you can be so much more alive and willing and ready to be in a relationship when that relationship presents itself. A safe space to be you and your truth with coming out coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Mark Lipinski is coming to Toginet. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. A live two-hour show Wednesday afternoon starting at 3, 2 central on toginet.com. Creative Mojo. It's fun, entertaining, informative, inspirational, and illuminating. Lipinski has worked on such shows as Oprah, The View, The Joan Rivers Show, and Ricky Lake. He's busy, but he's got the drive to share with Creative Mojo, dedicated to the modern crafter and crafting lifestyle. Dive into the info and enjoy everything from celebs to entertainment news to recipes, quilting and needlework, knitting, painting, woodworking, Christmas crafts, and so much more. This show boldly encourages you to discover and harness your own creative spirit by living creatively every day. For more on Mark and the show, check out marklepinski.com. Don't miss the fun. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. Wednesday afternoon, starting at 3, 2 Central on toginet.com. Everyday Autism Miracles with Shannon Pinrock. Friday afternoons at 2, 1 Central on toginet.com. Life after an autism spectrum diagnosis doesn't have to be difficult. It can be joyful, happy, and filled with hope. Join Shannon Penrod, author, speaker, coach, and mom of a six-year-old recovering from autism for this inspirational hour of hope. She's even authored a series of children's autism books with her son, Jim. For more information about the books, Shannon, and Everyday Autism Miracles, go to her website, shannonpenrod.com. From there, you can also get to her other websites, blogs, and connections. On Everyday Autism Miracles, you'll hear stories from parents whose children have made miraculous strides. You'll also get the inside dish on therapies, treatments, supplements, and how to get funding to help you afford them. Miracles abound in the autism community. So tune in for Everyday Autism Miracles to listen, share, laugh, and surround yourself with hope. Everyday Autism Miracles with Shannon Penrod. Friday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. Okay, so right before the break, we were talking demons and angels and getting to know yourself in this funky little world we call Finding Cupid. And my guest, David Cruz III, is here with me from Finding Cupid. 
And when we went to break, David had just said something really powerful. And I'm going to kind of like paraphrase it. But what he said is, you need to know yourself and you really need to understand that you know yourself better than anyone else when you go into a relationship. So that being said, David, I see that as kind of a springboard that this is where people get off track if they don't understand. Yeah this about themselves so you want to elaborate on that a little bit how do people get that you know suddenly they're on the detour and off track because they're not in tune with themselves yes Uh, so first and foremost um you know it's important that everyone knows that it may not be the right time for you to be in a relationship and you shouldn't rush into getting into one uh you know it's not required that you know you you have a relationship on this earth, you know. Um, But the most important thing that uh, you need to understand is that the relationship with yourself is the most important one to establish before you get into a relationship with another person. So I'll I'll elaborate on that even more. So you need to be 100% comfortable with who you are You need to be 100%, you know, happy with your career, you know, with your life. And, and from that point, you can use that as that, you know, benchmark to go forward and say, uh, I'm ready, you know, to cohabitate with someone to, you know, get out into the dating world. Oftentimes what happens is, you know, people, you know, are in between careers or are struggling with a new direction in life or um, are fresh from, a, you know, a former relationship or have insecurities that they're aware of um, but haven't dealt with that yet. And so I say, you know, and it's my biggest advice is to get happy with yourself and to be comfortable with yourself. And then at that point, you're going to be ready to move forward into a relationship. I always went back to that point in my life when I said, I am happy and comfortable sitting at a dinner table by myself and going to a movie by myself and enjoying it because I'm enjoying that time with me. And there are people who can't do that sometimes. And I think that that's such an important moment because if you can't, you know, do those things and enjoy the time with yourself, then you may have uh, a little bit of a, a problem doing it with somebody else. I that totally, makes sense. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, you know, there are no mistakes or nothing shows up in our life for the wrong reasons. And it's ironic you just said that because I was on a call yesterday with some coaching peers and the founder of our coaching school, Bruce Schneider, um, brilliant guy. He, he just, he does just phenomenal work. Obviously he's got a thriving coaching school, one of the top ones. And he said something really interesting. And I think this kind of aligns with what you just said about being ready, being with yourself and really understanding yourself. I love what he said. He said, it's great to want what you want, but realize there may be disappointment, but there's a reason for that disappointment. So when you ask for what you want, his advice is as ask for it in this way, as long as it's in my best interest, here's what I want. And it's kind of that higher calling saying, okay, I don't know if this is really going to be in my best interest, but this is what I want. Right now I want a relationship. And when you right. come and approach it from that perspective of I'm asking the higher power and I'm not talking, you know, I don't want to debate religious beliefs or anything like this. It's just saying I'm asking that higher power to guide this into my life if it's in my best interest. And right. then when it doesn't show up to take that stance that, okay, I guess it wasn't in my best interest to be in a relationship right now, it sure takes a hell of a lot of stress off of you and disappointment when you can navigate into that space, which is kind of what you're saying as well. Be accepting that this may not be the right time for you. Absolutely. And, you know, I know it sounds really cliche to say that everything happens for a reason, but, you know, anyone in life who has been through, you know, high highs and low lows and, you know, bounce back from every one of those moments can honestly speak to you know, to that by saying, look, everything does happen for a reason. And when you do look back in hindsight, 
you realize that that decision maybe wasn't the best for you at that time and for A, B, and C, you know, reasons. Right. And so if you do get into a relationship because you really wanted it at that moment, but then it ended for some reason, the important thing is to analyze, like, hey, why didn't that work out? And if you discover that it didn't work out because, you know, you weren't ready for it or you realize, you know, you were trying to offer up in a sense, a house that was ready to be sold, you know, right. but, it, you know, it still needed a lot of work, uh, then, then that's the, that's the hindsight and the, the wisdom that you're going to take away from it. And, and things do happen for a reason. I love that analogy. Uh, the house wasn't ready to be sold and you got to do a little bit of work. It's, yes. you know, people use lots of different metaphors and stuff. One of the things I, and I do work with clients. In fact, I have a client I'm going to share something about here momentarily. But I say a lot of times, if you don't have the entree to bring to the table, you better go cook a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's such an important thing that people forget. And, you know, there could be a thousand reasons in the world why, you know, society makes us feel that a relationship is the ultimate and for everything or the, you know, the award at the end of life or during life. But, you know, there are all different types of relationships. You know, the one of yourself is the most important, you know, and then there are friends and family, you know, and then, you know, lovers. and. Right. You have to learn how to do all of those at the same time um, or one at a time in order to have a successful personal one. So, you know, it's, it's a big learning process. Well, here's what I, I, I just caught on to something you just said, you know, learning to do all or one of those things really well. And as a coach, one of the things I try to interlink and connect the dots with my clients is, so let's kind of see what's happening in this one area and what's happening in one of my clients area right now is he's having thriving success in his career right ironically as soon as that piece showed up it was because and i'm making some assumptions here but i'm going to use it as an example he right. had gotten out of a relationship that wasn't working he had come to accept himself fully as a gay man he mm -hmm. had begun to truly be in himself and one of the last couple of sessions I said to him so do you really think this job would have shown up if you hadn't been ready and he said absolutely Great. not he sees the beauty of that now you know and mm -hmm. I think this is where we as human beings sometimes we want it all okay that's human nature of course however and I know you being you know the love dating guy that you are you're going to agree with what I'm about to say Sometimes you have to let the other pieces of the wheel of life, so to speak, show up and be dominant so you can learn the lessons from that area of your life so that you can go do and be more highly successful in other areas of life. Absolutely. You know, and I'll, I'll share a little bit more about, you know, my journey and it to where I am now, you know, from that moment when I first you know, I, I moved from Orange County uh, and had never been, you know, anywhere else. And uh, I literally started all over. I was <laughs> a girlfriend of mine said, look, you have a horrible relationship that's ending. I can see where you're needing to, you know, just leave everything and start over. Come live with me. You know, I have a couch to crash on and let's just pick up the pieces where we can. And the story goes that, you know, I really had no foundation for anything in life. And, and I really had no business being in a relationship um, at all either. And so what I did was um, I looked at I looked at everything that was happening in my life and I said, okay, I am not ready for a relationship here. I'm going to work on the career. I'm going to work on, you know, making myself so great about life again. You know, I'm going to work on my confidence. And I'm going to work on me. And as I checked off all those things on my list, all of a sudden, you know, the, it, it was presented in this crazy sort of way that 
you know, oh, okay, I can start dating again. And so the ability to go out and approach people became more fluid again. And then as the pieces started to fall back together again, I eventually ended up in a relationship. And it was because at that moment I was mentally ready, you know, and physically ready, uh, you know, for all these things that can happen and the attention that is needed for a relationship too. So can do things normally happen sometimes when you're in the middle of chaos? Sure, but the most appropriate time uh, to focus on a relationship is when, you know, you're ready to give it that due attention. Um, and that's when the best kind of relationships can happen. And I, I so agree with you on this because, and you know my story, coming out of the closet late in life, went through a divorce, was married to a woman, had two kids. And I w have seen this happen many times over. And we've got just a couple minutes before we'll go to break, so I'll try to make this really quick. But I was so hell-bent that I needed to get right into some kind of a relationship. And then when mm -hmm. I realized in that journey that I had never been alone, never, and mm -hmm. I'm running in fear to a relationship because I was so scared of being alone. And I mean, I had literally never been alone. A few brief months from when I graduated to college, from college, got into my first career. Yes, I was living on my own through college, but there was always roommates or dorm mates or whatever. Um, yeah. You know, and then suddenly, and I'm going to try to wrap this up because we've got just a minute here, but I'm suddenly living alone in my career, and then my ex-wife shows up in the picture. So suddenly, I wasn't alone again. And then now, we're right. 30 years forward and suddenly I am facing being alone like literally being alone one week on at the time it was a couple of days on a couple of days off with the kids and stuff I was petrified so when we come back yeah. we're gonna really talk about how these fears show up and what we can do to address these fears and I want to get into some fun funky places about you know relationships in the gay and lesbian world because I think there are some things that we face that others don't but I right. also want to make sure the message comes really clear Dating, love, it's all the same regardless of whether you're gay or straight. It's the same arrow. It's the same Cupid. It's the same thoughts that we all face. So when we come back, David and I will take you on a little journey into what are all those fears that we face. In the You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with coming out coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Get ready to laugh along with This Little Parent Stayed Home with Ali Lopreet. Friday evenings at 6, 5 central on Togedet.com. This is a truly realistic, no-nonsense, tell-it-like-it-is method that will have you laughing and crying, surviving while struggling, and hammering away at the hardships as you travel through the greatest journey of your life. Get empowered by joining thousands of other parents who have also decided to take a leap of faith into a double career with longer hours and half the pay simply because of the love they have for their children. Together, we are rebuilding a new economy that will support us rather than enslave us. Never again will we have to choose between raising our children and earning to provide for them. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. For more on Allie and her success, check out her website, OurMilkMoney.com. So come get empowered with This Little Parent Stayed Home with Allie Lopreet. Friday afternoons at 6, 5 Central on Toginet.com. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Be here for Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Trisha will dig deep into topics that matter most to women, inspiring women to make a change in their own lives and to make a difference in the world, and maybe even deep within their own hearts. Trisha is a wife, mom, speaker, family expert, and author of 24 books. For more information on Trisha and Living Inspired, go to her website, trishagoyer.com. That's T-R-I-C-I-A-G-O-Y-E-R.com. Trisha's vision is to be the voice of hope and possibility for women of all ages. Her intention is to serve ordinary women by encouraging extraordinary things with God's help. Trisha expresses real life, real hope for real women. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com.
Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. Hello, everyone. We're back. And you know what? I'm going to say something that's probably going to crack everybody up. But you know what? I've been feeling really like not myself lately um, because I, I'm having some interesting little body image issues. And I've got a great relationship. But <laughs> this is really about one of those fears of, oh, suddenly, you know, I'm OK. I'm going to be honest. I just turned 49 a couple of weeks ago. The big five O is looming ahead. And even in my beautiful relationship, <laughs> I'm going. Will he still love me with man boobs? I don't know. You know, we've got to figure this thing out here. So, but that's one of those fears that can truly begin to steer us away from love is our own body self image and self perceptions. And I know if I were to ask David to give me the 10, you know, top 10 things that people fear about not finding love, he could probably go on and we could take the rest of the show just talking about those. But Let's kind of go back to your own story, David. You said you wanted to kind of touch on that. So you, you're, you know, potentially you've been living on the couch, all this stuff. You're starting to evolve, but even as you're coming through that piece of your journey, what were some of the weird little fears that were cropping up in your own head? Well, you know, the fears that I had in that moment are the same fears that everybody else has. You know, it's those insecurities about. What if I do meet somebody and he, you know, finds out that I'm, you know, just got out of a relationship or that I just moved or that I don't know what my direction is right now and that I'm starting all over. You know, I'm a Virgo, so I love to overthink everything. It's kind of my my inner demon that I'm quite aware of. But, you know, sometimes you, you got to stop thinking of those things and just kind of go, okay, is my fear stemming from my own personal insecurities or do I really think that somebody is going to think that of me? At the Mm -hmm. end of the day, you know, somebody who meets you is going to love you for who you are in, in, in all of that, you know, uh, imperfections and perfections of yourself as you are. But what I realized when I was going through my journey of starting over was that, you know, in that moment, I was thinking too much about what this other person, this Romeo, you know, Prince Charming was going to be like when I met him. But I was taking away from the true issue at the table, which was, am I happy with where I am right now? And so when I realized that, I said to myself, I am going to work on making myself happy. So I spent, you know, the next couple of years just kind of saying, I'm going to, you know, get my career back in order. I'm going to do the things that I love. I'm going to, um, you know, get back into my writing. I'm going to you know, go to movies and do things that make me laugh and to really start to bring back my own personal happiness. And I think once I did that, I think that people were starting to pick up that I am, a, you know, a happy person, that I feel like I'm enjoying life. And those are the, the real things that people are attracted to. Don't think for a second that people cannot pick up on negative energy. <laughs> well, you know, I love this because he, this is so much it. And you can call it the the secret or the universe or whatever, but literally, and I've gone through some times just recently where I realized exactly what I was calling into my life was because of exactly how I was being in my life. And right. this piece of... When you're outwardly projecting what you are doing and being in the moment is exactly what you're going to pull into the picture. And I think that's kind of, that's really truly what you've said is where you had to get was so intimately back to you and happy and doing the things you love to do that suddenly when you walked out that door, and again, I know I tease you because you're just, you're just cute as a button and I would... <laughs> How are you in a heartbeat? But oh, what it was you. was this smile and this energy of happiness that had to come back forward in order to, A, be attractive to yourself. Yeah. And suddenly that became the attraction factor, I would say, potentially to you finding, you know, love in the right place once again. Absolutely. You know, I think that and, you know, I say it over and over again, but it really is the most important relationship you're going to have in life. Um, and that is with yourself. And every time I go sit down to dinner by myself, I think back to that moment when I did it for the first time. And it was so liberating um, to say that I could sit there and enjoy that moment because, 
you know, I, I love my life and I love what I'm doing and I'm happy with you know, the people around me. And that's an important thing because if you if you don't love that moment, then you got to work on it, you know, and you got to get out there and be happy with the career, the direction, and you know all the other elements in their life that will, you know, make that house ready to sell, and then a buyer will come along and buy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. Again, you know, so this is the second time you've used like a real estate euphemism. So are you like in the housing market? <laughs> Shopping for one with all this success. You know, are you no, looking you know, at the home? Think, you know. I think the thing is, is that, you know, in all my writing and, and in all the interactions that I've had with people, it really comes down to, you know, are you ready? Um, you know, or you know, when I meet people who are like, why can't I do love? Or why can't I find the right person? But then you start to see, you know, all these elements that show that this person is not ready or doesn't understand a relationship in general. And trust me, I've been on my share of bad relationships and I've been in my share of relationships that I've needed to get out of or relationships that I've been in where I had no business being in. So, you know, it's a process of learning how to do it, but it really does go back to understanding the wisdom uh, of where you came from and understanding yourself. So like a house, again, I guess that's the, the only way that I can, you know, right. relate to it. Um, you know, you can't, you can't sell something that, you know, doesn't have the great plumbing and because they'll show, you know, if somebody right. moves into your house and the plumbing's bad, you know, it's going to be more than obvious. So right. you just kind of have to go back to it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's really coming back to the basics. So I'm going to kind of switch some gears here because I want to bring up a sure. couple of things that I think are very relevant and you know if i've got my lovely lesbian listeners i'm sorry i'm not going to be able to probably bring something forward for you but there's a lot of stuff going on in the gay man's world right now that can become socially interactive distracting could be causing breakups whatever you want to say and they're those lovely little apps that we all have on our phones and two to mind grinder and scruff you know those are two that gay men use with a vengeance whether it's to hook up whether it's to make friends and so i'm just curious in and i don't live in you know and i i'm not gonna trying to offend any of my gay brothers or sisters i don't live in a gay bubble i live external of one i still have my gay community but it's kind of low key compared to West Hollywood area. What would you as a dating, you know, guru, expert, hopeless romantic, what's your take on the scruff grinder apps and what are they doing to this ability to find love, be committed, be in romance? Um, I can answer that in two ways. And and it's funny that you asked me this because this is kind of like the question to ask me. And I, and I do have a strong opinion about it. Um, you know, technology has changed our lives in, you know, a million different ways, you know, whether it be, you know, apps like Grindr or dating websites or texting and tweeting. You know, it is just a completely different world that we live in now than it was five years ago even. So... You know, my advice is, you know, when it comes to the grinders and scruffs of the world, that if you're a single man and all you want to do, and let's call the duck a duck, you know, if all you want to do is hook up and go out there and and do that, then go to those websites and go to those, you know, and use them for what I think that they are genuinely there for, which is hooking up. Um, you know, if you're looking for a relationship, you're not going to find it there. Um, are there scenarios and cases where people have met on Grinders uh, or other websites, similar apps, similar, um, and that have found, you know, that person? Sure. But, you know, again, if you're looking to the percentage of successful relationships that have started from those, they're not as high as, you know, you know the in-person things. So I stand by my stance, which is if, you, if you're looking for a relationship, it's not going to be on Grindr. Um, but if you're looking to hook up, you know, go for it. <laughs> Knock right. yourself out. It's there. But and I think you know, this is, I think it's a really powerful thing that you just said. And you and I have a very similar stance now. I'm going to do a little confession here, and this makes may sound really a little self-serving the way I'm going to explain it. I'm on Gruff, and I mean Scruff, <laughs> Scruff and Grinder as the coming out coach. And I make friends with guys. I'm there representing what I do because to me it's another outlet that I might actually meet someone who needs my help or meet 
a gay guy who's like going through transition and going, you know, I really am looking for a coach. And I've had some right. very interesting conversations. I've actually had a couple of people tell me to get off the apps. And, you know, if, you know, if I'm not there to hook up, I shouldn't be there. You know, whatever. I, I have thick sure. days. But I find this a very interesting arena right now. And I have a good friend who's a therapist who actually refers clients to me. And um, we had a conversation around this a few weeks, well, a couple of months ago. And he actually said the biggest thing that shows up in his practice right now with the gay men that he works with are issues around these apps. Right. Very. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the technology in general. You know, I could, I could point my finger at, you know, grinders and, you know, the scruffs all day long. But, you know, it comes down to the technology. And it, it's, a, it's a, a new and exciting way for people to meet and to hook up. You know, again, if you're a single man or if, if you're just not in the place which is completely acceptable, you know, to be single and not want to be in a relationship and you understand that moment, then yep. by all means, if that's what you want to do, safely go forward and, and hook up. But when it comes to love and successful relationships, it's not going to be found there. And right. that goes the same for Facebooks and Twitters and stuff. You have to remove the technology in order to have a relationship. Exactly. And I think that's so valuable and such good information to share. Because when you remove the technology, you get back to the real thing of face-to-face having conversations yeah. and all of this. So we've got about a minute left, and I think this is, a, is an excellent place to just, you know, kind of address that. This technology thing has really begun to put some big voids in relationships, you know, not just in love. Right. <laughs> it, you know, as a father, it like, and I had to crack up a couple of weeks ago because I we have a room in the front of our house that's kind of around the other side of the house from where my our daughter's bedrooms are and uh-huh. it was the first time i actually texted my daughters to ask them <laughs> to come over there so it's a really good example of how technology gets in the way of not only life but getting to commitment and being truly in relationship with one another and when we come back from the break we're going to really dig into this in the last segment about what does it mean to really be in relationship be in commitment be a hopeless romantic, and get some really good tips from my guest, David Cruz, from Finding Cupid. We'll be right back in just a few seconds on the Coming Out Lounge, where we're talking Cupid Zero and love. You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. It's time to awaken your creativity and unlock your greatness by listening to The Nancy Pristine Show every Thursday from noon to 2 Central Time on Toginet.com. Nancy is also known as the Happiness and Well-Being Ambassador. She's an award-winning author and radio talk show host. And every week on the Nancy Pristine Show, you'll hear tips, stories, and tested techniques from celebrities, star athletes, and executive business people. People who have achieved greatness in their field. Everyone deserves the ultimate life. And now you can create your own success story and achieve a brand new you by listening to the Nancy Pristine Show. The intent of the Nancy Pristine Show is to give you everything you need for happiness, well-being, and success. For more on Nancy and the show, check out her website, Nancy Pristine. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E dot com. Then listen up. You will never settle for second best again. You're going to love the Nancy Pristine Show every Thursday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Central Time on toginet.com. Evermore, people have the means to live, but no meaning to live for. These are the words of Dr. Viktor Frankl, the inspiration for the movie Victor and I. That's V-I-K-T-O-R and I, movie.com. And Talk Sense Radio, The Meaning Connection, with host Mary Similuka and frequent contributor Alexander Vesley. Friday afternoons at 3, 2 central on toginet.com. More and more people today are discarding their quest for money, possessions, and things, and are instead beginning a serious quest to find meaning in life. Until now, these discussions were historically in the hands of priests, ministers, and scribes, then to philosophers, psychiatrists, and psychologists. Now, these deep discussions are where they should be, in the hands of individuals, on the air, with you. 
Talk Sense Radio, The Meaning Connection, with your host, Mary Similuka, and frequent contributor, Alexander Vesley. Friday afternoons at 3, 2 Central, on Toginet.com. Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. Okay, we're flying through love, we're flying through the hour, and there's so many more questions I would love to throw in front of my good friend David Cruz from Finding Cupid. But before I do, I just want to queue up next week's show. We're going to go drag, we're going to go talk to someone who does drag professionally, the challenges he, she has faced, being a drag performer, and being Poppy Fields. And I'm so looking forward to this show because... He, she will bring such a beautiful light into what it's like to be a gay man, a drag performer, and his own little journey running from the hills of Alabama to become a drag performer. So that's next week, Poppy Fields on the Coming Out Lounge. So now back to my good friend David. So before we went to break, we had been talking about the apps and everything. And I want to jump in now and have a little conversation that I bet could stir up a lot of controversy. Um... In the gay community, one of the things I know that we can get beat up about from the outside world is this lack of commitment, supposedly, especially for gay men, it seems, not so much the lesbians, but lack of commitment. Um, it's all about the sex. Um, and then a lot of outside people hear about, quote, the open relationships. So right. romance expert, I want to get you <laughs> on, is an open relationship a a committed relationship, and is it possible to have really true, authentic romance in an open relationship? Absolutely. So, you know, I'll first touch on the thought that, you know, open relationships only exist or, you know, sex only exists in in homosexual relationships. So we know very well that, you know, there are all different types of people out there and all different types of sexual needs and stuff that, that people have. And so they cert- those things certainly exist in the straight world as well. So I will first of all say that, you know, it's not just something that we think about or has, is in our thoughts in, in, in the homosexual community or the gay community. So, you know, do they work for some people? Sure they do. Um, is it? The most successful? Probably not. Um, I think innately that human beings have the desire to be with one person. There are studies that have been done with many different different types of cultures that, like for example, that have more than one wife or you know uh, are you know larger relationships. Uh, uh, and, it, and ultimately, that one person comes back to one specific person. So I think it speaks to our innate need to be with one person to, you know, uh, create a relationship with and, you know, to connect with. Um, so, you know, in my opinion, uh, I don't think open relationships work. I don't think that one can certainly say that I'm in love with, you know, this person and this person, but... There are relationships out there that, you know, that people think that they do, but I've seen more than often that they don't. Right. And I think this is, you know, this is where it does come down to really knowing yourself, number one. Uh, Right. Because I have been involved with clients, have friends who are in open relationships or in, you know, in multi-person relationships and trying to keep judgment aside, I tend to see from the outside looking in, I don't see what I would define, at least for me, true happiness in right. them or in their relationship. So I think this is, again, and, you know, I have clients that have said to me, you know, I, I think I want to look, uh, look at having an open relationship. And my standard response is, as your coach... I want to support you in any way that I can. And if that's your goal, that's my job as your coach is to help you navigate to a place where you get what you want. I will never sit in judgment or criticize, but obviously I begin to bring forth questions that challenge what, what is the need? What does this look like? And the reason I ask you the commitment and romance question, because that's actually 
one of the questions I ask my clients, are you looking for commitment? Are you looking for right. romance in relationships? Are you looking for freedom? And how does that freedom look? Because there's, and the questions go on and on and on, obviously. Right. And, and I'll be the first to say that if, a, if, a, you know, if someone that I was dating approached me and said, you know, I think that we should bring a third person to an, into our relationship, or what do you think about open relationships? I don't think that they are completely sold on my idea of a relationship, and it has to meet up. Right. So if one person isn't comfortable, then it's not good for both. And you shouldn't fool yourself into thinking that because I like this person that I should do what they want. It has to be a mutual thing. And, you know, if you're both in that same level, then sure, go forward. But I can honestly tell you, I have met those people. I have dated some, per you know, a person that introduced that to me. And I said, I, it's just not for me. And I'm sorry, but I just don't think that I want to be in a relationship that thinks that another person besides me is going to, you know, suffice their need. So, <laughs> You know, you're going to establish boundaries in your life. And, you know, for me personally, I just don't think that there's space for, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. You well, know, uh, is and here's, here's the stance or the position or the vantage point that I come from when I work with individuals around this stuff. It goes back to what is, what is it that you need, desire, want? And I put the right. need out of it. I really say, what is it you really desire for your life? And then if this is something they really desire, if they are truly saying that's what they desire, and again, I don't judge around it or anything, then I try to clear the cobwebs around it that they're ready to really be truly in themselves as that person in an open relationship or in a three-way relationship or whatever it may be, or even choosing to be single, you know? And right. it's all a matter of getting down to you, as you so beautifully shared earlier in the show, getting truly to yourself and really understanding yourself and saying, yes, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be. So a really good example of this was we just came back from vacation and we did the modern family vacation. It was me, my partner, the two kids and my ex-wife. We went on a vacation together. As shocking yeah. as that would be, that's what we did. And I didn't have the conversation, but my partner had a conversation with my ex-wife about, you know, how we alternate weeks and stuff. And she actually said, I cherish the moments I get to be alone because she has yeah. never been married. She doesn't date. And she really cherishes being alone and being with herself. And she said she doesn't know that she could ever be with someone again. But the key to that is she's also truly embraced that as who she is. Right. Some people would say those sort of things because they think that's what other people want to hear. And I think this is that key point that you brought up and we've kind of already talked about that, whether it's a committed relationship, an open relationship, being single, um, if you want to be a guy that, yes, your time is spent on scruff, grinder, whatever it is, then at least accept that's who you are. Yeah, own, I agree. Truly own it. Because otherwise, right. that's where you detour off your own path of being truly happy. Absolutely. And it's okay to be any one of those. There is no, you know, required label that you're supposed to wear. Right. But at the same time, know that if you want to be single, then that's okay. But don't try to be, you know, a person that is, you know, uh, eternally single and then try to get in relationships because that doesn't work. You know, it's, it's apples and oranges. Right, right. And, and it's, two different, it's two different recipes altogether. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and I think that's interesting because it is a shift, and I'm going to take this out of the realm of gay lesbian right now. I'm going to take it into the realm of anyone who's dating heterosexual, gay, lesbian, whatever, transgender. You have to make the work and do the work to do the transition from being single and being in a relationship. And if you yeah. think you you know, okay, so Rick's on his soapbox, but if you think you can jump from being single and into a relationship and it doesn't take any work, then you know what? I've got some Kool-Aid I want you to drink because it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest misconception because, um, you know, a relationship is work. It's a lot about being humble and being wrong and, you know, and then remembering little things that you're supposed to. It, I mean, it is, it is work and anyone 
gay or straight who has been in long-term relationships will tell you. My grandparents always tell me, you know, it's a lot of work and you will fight, you know, but there is beauty in, in that relationship that you create. Right. So we've got about three minutes till the end of the show, which really sucks because I'm just enjoying this so much. So before, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. Before we get to there, um, I'm debating what I want to do here, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it really quickly because I think you can really share. One of the things we always do, as you know, David, on the show is we share just a little bit about our own coming out process. And I don't know if you can do it in a nutshell, but really the millionaire matchmaker thing kind of was a whole new coming out for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I come from a tiny little island uh, called Guam, and it's a very, you know, little island in the Pacific. And when I came out on that show, um, you know, it's a, very, it's a pretty big show on a pretty big yep. network. And it got back to Guam, the island back there, and it was a really big deal because I was not only someone who was from Guam on a very large television show, um, but it really brought up the gay thing, uh, and you know, being gay and, and being coming from a very Catholic and, you know, conservative background. So, you know, I felt like I had come out all over again, in a sense, <laughs> you know, to those people there. So yeah. it was a process. And I, you know, I had to really kind of say, this is who I am. And I, and, and I was who I was in the show. And, and that hasn't ever changed. And, you know, it was a process to really be true to who I was. And, you know, all the people that have loved me continue to love me. And it just really brought into light, you know, just the normalcy of, of who I am and what I do. And, and the least thing, which was, you know, what I do in the bedroom was, you know, the least of, you know, the, the right. conversation. Yeah. And I think that's such, I, I'm so glad we got that in because we've got one minute left. So in one minute left, and I love how you shared that story, give me, Give me a tip that you would give anybody who's trying to find romance. Um, if you're trying to find romance, you know, definitely do your diligence with being happy with who you are. So, so if you are a hopeless romantic, there is another romantic out there for you. And don't think that you, you know, don't have too heavy of a checklist. Be realistic. But at the same time, you will find someone that has more interest as you do. And they're out there. You know, don't give up. Do not give up. give up. That's so true. And I think to add to that, this due diligence is really in its own way preparing you for the beautiful work that you get to do. And I don't say have to do, but that you get to do when you step into a relationship with someone else. So thank you, David, so much for being on the show. I thank look forward you. to seeing you soon. You were absolutely wonderful. And I want to have you back so we can do more of this. This is Coming Out Coach Rick wishing you love and Cupid's arrow for anyone who's out there looking for romance. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for joining us today with the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clements. Make sure you tune in with us next week, same time, same place, for the Coming Out Lounge.